Welcome to Caption Planet, He's Our Hero. Chris and Ahmed look at pictures, but I do like the planet aspect. It's kind of a big leap for uh, climate change, just putting it out there, You're right? right? That, it's a huge And leap. I do consider myself Captain Planet. I am Captain Planet. I am Captain Planet. You are. I you am. Are. Yes. And I didn't attend any climate rallies last week, but my you were in the did. building. My family did. It's, sorry, I gotta, I gotta pay the bills, okay? But what up, mofos? What's happening? We here. Four games in the book. Ahmed Farid is 25 here. 25% of the way through. We're a quarter of the way through. Quarter, quarter of the quarter way bowl. through. We're at the quarter bowl. <laughs> um, I got Jonald McDonald behind the camera. Yep. Proud Happy. today. He's got his Giants hat Huge on. Huge smile on his face. It's 71, so he's got two flannel shirts on in uh, the end of September. And a coffee. I mean, too. hey. He's I, just not I, feeling I, anything. I don't know. And this kind of this guy behind the camera, we'll show you him eventually, but I think we're better off if we don't show you. It's kind of the mistake. <laughs> He'll run man. out here. He'll run out here. At some I, point. I mean, if he wears flannels now, what's he gonna wear? Is he gonna wear tank tops in like January? Is yeah. that what he does? Snowsuit. Like, like my snow children suit. have snowsuits. Snows they have to wear out, guns out. Like yeah. he's gonna, that's his smart race. You won't even be able to see him in there. Okay, but he is on that Daniel he's Jones happy. bandwagon. Oh, what up, everybody? Uh, we got the Chris Sims unbutton. Like I said, Ahmed's here. Yeah. We're gonna have fun. Do deep dive on two games. Okay. We're gonna deep dive the Rams Bucks scoring extravaganza. Great game. Got a few. Yeah, great game. Right. I mean, that was fun to watch. Got a few interesting things to say about that matchup. Uh, the other game, Chiefs-Lions. Oh. That was kind of the great game at the 1 o'clock time. Pretty awesome. My Detroit Lions. Your Detroit Lions. You like, didn't want to believe me before the year that I said they might be kind of good this year. They might be kind of yeah. competitive. You were like, this Chris Sims guy. I don't think he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> well, we've heard it uh, so many times. Like, oh, this is the year. This is the year. And I honestly, I'm super happy they lost, but I'm very happy with that performance. They should have won it. They should have won. They turned the ball over. They fumbled at the one yard line, yes. gave up a 100 yard return. We'll, we'll get into that, but yeah. they did. They but were I'm the better, feel, better team on the field yesterday. There's no question about that. Um, Let's see. What else we got? We got damn okay today. Damn okay. All right. Well, yeah, damn okay. okay. We got two on the list today, and I think you, I've heard you have one I yourself. I have one. I'm going to okay. throw one in there, yeah. All right, sounds good. Oh, I did research for this one. I'm going to throw some numbers at you in some of these games that's going to make you go. Make, I, I'm going to be on the damn okay by You're the gonna, end. Okay, this. good. Yeah. Good. Okay. I mean, <laughs> let's let's do that. Okay. And then, um, all right, I mean, let's get right to it. You know we're going to do give me the headline. That's what we're going to start off with. And the first one is... Mitchell Trubisky, Mitchell Trubisky yeah. early on in that game uh, between the Vikings and Bears, injured shoulder. So what we're hearing, the latest that we're hearing right now, is yeah. non-throwing shoulder, uh, separated shoulder, right. dislocated. Mm -hmm. uh, he, the reports are that he's going to make the trip to London right. to face the Raiders, not play. I think Matt Nagy is, is not quite sure that that's accurate at this right. point, that he may or may not go. I don't think he's going to play yeah. going forward. I here. can't imagine he will. Um, but, I, I mean, when you have a defense like that, it doesn't even matter. But so, I right. mean, Mitchell Trubisky goes out and Chase Daniel goes in. And yeah. Chase Daniel looked fine. Yes. I, th I thought, and he knows that offense, too. He does, right. What do you think? Yeah, I, I mean, I think that's that's exactly the point. I mean, first off, nasty injury by Trubisky. Yes. It really is. When I saw it, I thought of, like, Drew Brees when he tore his shoulder uh, with the Chargers before he ended up going to New Orleans that year. You know, you get in that position where your arm gets extended and then you fall on it as it's getting extended. It just gets pushed so far back. And I've seen a few other quarters. Chad Pennington had an injury like that as well where he tore his. I was really worried about his torn labrum. Mm -hmm. And I know that they're, they're reporting that there might have been a slight tear in yeah. the labrum, right? So either way, it's not his throwing shoulder. That's at least one positive thing about it. But the, but the headline there with the Bears is no big deal. I mean, NBD, okay? Yeah. I mean, Trubisky, is his ceiling higher than Chase Daniel? Yes, it is. Is he better than Chase Daniel right now? I'm not sure about that because I can't really say a whole lot of positive things about Mitchell Trubisky this year. I was a defender of him last year. Uh, I really was. I see athletic talent in him. I see big throws from time to time. But the lack of consistency, consistency this year has been concerning. Uh, and Chase Daniel came in yesterday. And, I, you know, listen, um, and this is one thing I've been told behind the scenes yeah. from a number of people. And Matt Nagy, is, he kind of says, says this in his cryptic, cryptic coach language. Uh, 
you know, and if you really listen to him, he can't put in his full array of offense or I got to pull back and make things simpler on offense. And you think that's true? I think it is true. I've heard from people around the NFL that is an issue with Trubisky. The, the, uh, you just can't dump huge amounts of inventory on him. Yeah. He's not at that stage yet. Hey, it is year three. It is the second offensive coordinator, but I don't know. Maybe he's just not smart enough to take in all of the offense. Either way, Chase Daniel was in Kansas City with Matt Nagy and that Andy Reid scheme, and he looked good yesterday. And, again, they don't need anybody, like you said, to reinvent the wheel with that defense. You know? Well, I mean, there, it's, there were some people that said, you know, oh, Vic Fangio, which I think Vic Fangio is a great, great coach. Great defensive coach. Yes. I covered him in San Francisco. A good guy, too, and the players yeah. really respect him. Right. Like an old-school coach that players respect. I love that. Yeah, of course. Um, but there were some that said, oh, when he leaves, it could the things could fall apart a little bit. Yes, but they did. People in the NFL, like uh, when I said the Bears were still going to be one of like the best defenses on football yeah. before the season, I had a lot of friends around the NFL, oh, their defense is going to fall out for that Vic. Like, are there crazy that's I just want to say that that's my headline yeah. Vic who okay because Chuck Pagano is a freaking really good coach and I you know I think for some reason there's this like mystique around Chuck Pagano because he got fired with the Indianapolis Colts and their defense was never top tier can you name me a player from those Colts defenses that went to the playoffs the first few years of Andrew Luck's career no nobody can that's the point Chuck Pagano got teams that were crap to the playoffs him and Andrew Luck and, he, you know, he, again, he's showing that he is a hell of a defensive coach. Right. Uh, and that, that was an impressive, dominant win by them yesterday. Shut out that Vikings run game, and Kirk Cousins uh, was not very special. And that's the thing. Real, real quick on Cousins, yeah. because the, the talking is that Adam Thielen is upset with, with Kirk Cousins. Didn't come out and say that. Yeah. Didn't say Kirk Cousins' name, but said, we've got to be able to throw the ball deep. There are some plays there that we had open. Uh, they have a little bit of a history. We've seen in the sidelines yeah, before. That, right? They've yelled at each other. Right. Clearly, they're they're frustrated right now. Uh, when you have Delvin Cook, you do want to ride Delvin Cook as much as you can. You do. I remember something that you said in the offseason, how if you have an offense that's designed towards the run and you're not passing a lot, which he did in his one game, you know, yeah. 10, 10, yeah, uh, 10, 10 attempts, attempts, right? Yeah. It's tough to get in a rhythm. Right. You know, it's actually more difficult to be a quarterback in a running first offense than it a is. passing first offense. Yes. Where do you fall on, on Kirk Cousins? On, is, is he – performing poorly or is he in a rough situation well yeah I mean it, no I, I would say he's in a little bit more if you maybe pick one of the two I would yeah. say he's in a little bit of a rough situation and everybody sees Diggs and Thielen and they think they should be good in the past mm -hmm. game okay Diggs and Thielen are real good okay don't get me wrong here but let's first off this is not like Odell and Antonio Brown or Julio Jones it's not like teams are going oh my gosh we have to double these two or they're gonna tear us apart sure. man to man teams are wary of them certainly and maybe you'll double a guy in a certain down and distance and situation because they know the offense wants to go to them, right? But more times than not, they don't get double coverage because they're like, oh, so super talented. we got to put right. two guys on them. My big thing, and I've been saying this the last few weeks with the Minnesota Vikings, love their run game. I do question if they couldn't run the ball, like a game like we saw yesterday, could their pass game hold their side of the, you know, what do I want to say, their share of the load or whatever else, whatever the I'm trying to say yeah, there. Yeah. But you know what I'm trying yep. to say. Um, and the answer is no. And because I've been a very underwhelmed. It's basic stuff. It's it's day one, day two, day three. Like, this is a, hey, it's the first day of training camp, and we're just going to try to get the rookies used to a few NFL plays. I mean, that's right. their inventory of their pass offense. So it does not impress me that way. And if their run game doesn't work, I think you see Strugglesville that way. And I, think, I don't think Adam Thielen's taking a shot at Cousins. I don't. I think he just realizes, like, Man, there was a few plays we were open and we could have struck and we got a hit right now. If we don't yeah. hit on those, you know, I mean, then, then we lose. And, he's uh, frustrated. He's frustrated. He should be. But I'm just going to tell you, it's not going to get much better. Like, him and Diggs are not going to be around 100 receptions. This is not – they're they're yeah. just not capable. Don't say – I drafted Diggs. Don't Did say Did you? That yeah, me. I'm yeah, sorry. I mean, it was a good day for Diggs, but I think that's what you're going to see. I think you're going to very rarely see both have a good day. Yeah. It's going to be like, oh, this week it was just this guy. It was the right matchup, whatever it is. You know, the next week it's the other guy. Some weeks it might just be Dalvin Cook and a little tight end play and just yeah. – <laughs> So uh, that what, is what the What if the coaching staff's okay with that? What if the coaching staff's like, we don't want the passing game to be the star? I know. I think they are okay yeah. with it. They just need to do even a little bit more. That's all I'm saying. It's yeah. just got to be a little bit more for when you play the Bears or some of the top-notch defenses in football who say, like, oh, yeah, you run the ball? Or, yeah, we got big 
Right. Over here to stop the run too. Right. Then you got to be able to have some pass game to lean on, and they don't have that. And that was a good win for the Bears. Really dominant. I mean, Cleo Mack, that defense, pretty damn Such special. a tough division, too. Yeah. We're, we're seeing that the NFC North is going to be with the Lions and the Bears and the Definitely. Vikings. It's just uh, Packers in there as well going to be very tough. Cowboys, Saints, Sunday night football. Man. Well, another shocker. Um, we thought the Cowboys were rolling. I, a lot's been made of that schedule early on for the Cowboys that made it, maybe made them look a little bit better than they, right. they were. But right. still, I think a lot of us thought that – They'd come into New Orleans and without Drew Brees, and they'd be able to, to do some things. They, they could not no. here. No. I mean, my, my headline would be toughness and physicality still wins football games. Yeah. You know, again, I know it's like we're in this era of like, oh, you got to have the franchise quarterback or you can't win a game. Oh, okay, sure. I mean, look at the Jacksonville Jaguars. Look at the Carolina Panthers. Look at the New Orleans Saints. Yeah. Two weeks in a row, two wins. Are those guys franchise quarterbacks? Absolutely not. But, I mean, the, the New Orleans Saints, they made this transition a few years ago. They're no longer about, like, 5,000 yards passing. And I know everybody kind of thinks that because you just we see Drew Brees and that. Sean Payton, and yep. that's what it is. But I've tried to tell people, even from last year, they are a run-first football team. Their defensive line, you're absolutely insane. And I said this on the pod last week. If you think you're going to run up the middle on the New Orleans Saints, it's just one big, bad mofo after another in there. Nobody's going to push them around. I don't care if you're the Dallas Cowboys now or the Dallas Cowboys of 1993. Yeah. They're not pushing the Saints' interior O-line. The Saints got run on a little bit the first two weeks, but it was on the edge. It was those type of runs. It wasn't, like, up the middle. And, hey, they're just playing smart football. They're playing defense. I'm excited to watch that film. I'm going to break that down for the Wednesday deep dive just because I feel like the Saints might have done some different stuff on the back end of coverage that, because they've been a man-aggressive type football team. But a huge win. And Bridgewater is not messing games up. Kind of taking what's there to be had. Which is exactly what you want from a backup quarterback. Right. That's I, mean, it. I think there are some people that think, oh, Teddy Bridgewater, the former end of the first round pick, he yeah. should be able to come in and right. he should be able to be a star right. as well. Yeah. And I, it's just, it, it's not. And, and, and for everybody out there, be. I don't think the stats would have been any better if Drew Brees played last night. Hmm. There wasn't that much there to be had. He threw an interception. Okay. And it wasn't his fault. Teddy Ginn dropped the football. But he played the game just right. Sean Pay Payton played the game just right. Their defense was very impressive. Uh, no run game for the Cowboys. And Dak Prescott, yeah, had a few times of not being able to create a big pass play, patting the ball extra. And let's not forget, Zeke Elliott fumbled in fourth and one. Yeah. Right? Uh, also, Jason Wims Witten fumbles wide open down the middle of the field as they're mm -hmm. kind of like, oh, maybe they're going to start mounting a drive. And here's one other big point that I was missed during the game. Game's 3-3, okay? Halfway through the second quarter, Saints driving the ball, and anybody needs to go back and watch this. There's a pass to Michael Thomas on the right sideline, back shoulder pass, right? Only got one foot down. Uh, I thought that the Cowboys should have challenged that. I'm 100% positive it was one foot down. Um, we can look at it together later if you yeah. want, but either way. I do want to check your work on that. Yeah, yeah we thank you. Please, I know, because I'm known to lie. <laughs> shit. But uh, either way, it's really, I mean, amazing what the Saints are doing. They, to go 2-0 yep. against those two opponents who they might have, like, to have tiebreakers on That's against. Seattle. And, you yeah. know, right. It's, uh, it's big. I think the biggest thing is that you mentioned, too, is, you know, Zeke, 18 rushes, 35 yards. It's a 1.9 average, second worst average among all running backs. And so my headline is, if you can do that to Zeke, yeah. you win. Yeah. You do that to Zeke, you win. And what I'm curious about, and I do want to, uh, I do want you to do that, yeah. dive into the Saints' defense because I, I think I've heard you say that they, their defensive line stops the run better than anyone else. It does, which is a headline that I don't think a whole lot of people think associate with the Saints. Right. It, it was the number two run defense in football last year, and it, again, I think it gets overshadowed because we go Kamara, 100%. Thomas, Bree, Sean Payton, and we just we forget things. Like that. And then we see their defense, their their pass defense has not been great. So I, I feel like they must have changed something up. The Dallas offense, as you know, I've sang their praise very hard the first few weeks of the year. Certainly were stymied last night. Marshawn Lattimore was phenomenal. And uh, I just I, I want to see what they did to attack the Cowboys back in the secondary and what kind of new wrinkles they threw at them. But either way, that was a, I was a fun football game. Yeah. I enjoy watching 12-10 mm -hmm. because um, – Buttholes get tight in those games, okay? They just do, all right? Yeah. I mean, they do. You get right. afraid to, oh, I'm going to mismanage the situation, yeah. the game. You know, what do I do here? Do I take a chance and, you know, pick an aggressive pass play? Or, right. And all of a sudden, you know, a, a strip sack fumble or an no interception can change the game. Right. Yeah. And I enjoy that. So, yeah. uh, okay. all right, that's it for that game. Now, 
That was, a deep, that was almost a deep dive. Yeah, it was almost a deep dive. Okay. When you get talking about uptight buttholes, that's a deep dive, okay? <laughs> All right, Mike Tarico podcast. Tarico, yeah. Tony, Rodney, Florio, breakdown week four. They don't let you on there? No, I don't want to be there, oh, okay? okay? I go. When we get done with the pregame show, I want to go home. Oh, thank you. Yes, yeah. I've, I've had enough of the week. And you're home in time for? I'm home in time where I'm, Second no, quarter? the game started, but I've DVR'd it. So oh, okay. I, I'm usually about a half hour behind. I catch up somewhere in the late third quarter after I've gone through commercials and things like that. Yeah, okay. so I'm a little behind. But Sorry, uh, I just ruined Mike's promo here. Yeah, so. it's okay. Don't worry. It's Mike Tirico. You can't ruin Mike Tirico. <laughs> That's true. He is the godfather <laughs> of NBC, okay? But uh, he is available on YouTube and always a good listen. Mm -hmm. Mike is all over the NFL, has little nuances that he has written down, watched as we watch the games together on Sunday. And you're always going to get great breakdowns from Tony, Rodney, and Florio is going to give you the news of the day and the, and the big concerns. Uh, so that's that. Mike Tirico Podcast. Do it or I shall beat your Do butt. it. You know. I think there was a lot of really good things. There's some things, you know, there were so many different snaps, so many opportunities where we threw the football today, Bill. So there's going to be a lot of things we can go back and look at. I love the way that he continued to battle, took some shots, continued to respond, and, and those are things that we can take away from a positive. Oh, a lot of things we can go back and look at. Sean McVay. Yeah. In, in a game that I think shocked the world, right. the fact that, first of all, that there's, what, 95 points scored Bucks in, in Saints. Yeah. But the fact that the, the, the Rams were basically down the whole game, and it was almost like the Buccaneers had it in control. They did. All game. Well, some early turnovers by the Rams offense certainly uh, put the Bucks in the power position. Great yeah. first drive by the Bucks. Okay. Um, second drive. You know the the Rams are the, or later on later on in the quarter the Rams are kind of driving. Guess who? Shaquille Barrett gets around the edge, yeah. knocks the ball in the air. Golf gets an interception. Not Golf saw it. Okay, the Bucks put a 50-yard drive together, score a touchdown. They go 14 nothing. Then Golf does throw a bad interception to Lamonte David. Bucks get like a nine-yard pass, one play, nine-yard drive. They're up 21 nothing before the game Boom. really even settled in. Yep. Um, but it was impressive. Rams. So we're doing the deep dive on, on Rams Bucks here because we yes. put it out to Twitter. Right. You guys got to vote for two games. We got Bucks and Rams. We also got Lions and Chiefs. We'll do a little bit later on. Yep. So I've got the I've got the notes. You the got Christmas the notes. notes right here. Yep. The, the handwriting is not much easier to read from where you are than from where I am. How dare right you? There. How dare you? My I, script writing is phenomenal. It's not bad. Yes. It's actually not it's bad. It's just hard. It's somebody it, else's script writing. It takes me a while to kind of get it. On a photocopy. It's and not it's good. photocopied. Yeah. yeah. It's like yeah. two generations down. Right. Um, so what do you want to start with? You want to start with Rams O against the Bucks D well, or the Bucks D versus the Rams D? Let's let's start. Let's start with the Bucks O and Rams D, and okay. then we'll get it. We'll, we'll get into the rest uh, after that. Um, so here, can yeah. I throw something out? Please so, throw it out. So Jameis is obviously the, one of the most interesting parts of their offense. Definitely. But I know you made some notes here that they ran the ball well, which they I think did. helped Jameis Winston. No question. Um, I looked up something with Jameis, and we, we kept talking about the, the long passes with Bruce Arians, right? right. They're going to work the field. And I think they did that to a, to a certain extent. But I was looking at passes behind the line of scrimmage to help him. Yeah. Six for six, 50 yards, and one of his touchdowns. Way to go. Behind the line of scrimmage. Way right to go. There. That's how you slow down an overaggressive pass rush. You want to stop Dante Fowler and Aaron Donald from flying up the field, flying up the field, yeah. flying up the field. Oh, screen to Godwin. Oh, screen to O.J. Howard. Screen to the running back. You know, that'll slow them down because once they see it once or twice and they see somebody, oh, wait, was somebody, oh, okay, now let me go after it. So that, or, or you just get big plays out of it regardless, and that's what they did. They capitalized. It was a brilliant game plan by Byron Leftwich and Bruce Arians. It yeah. really was, and we'll get into some of the nuances of it. Go ahead. Keep, okay, keep so uh, me I'm going gonna, gonna to decipher some of your notes here. Yep. I'm, I'm right in the middle here. Let's get to the run game. Okay. Because you said Jones impressive. Yeah. Um, the pass rush. So they, he was impressive not only in running the ball. Yes. But you also liked them chipping on Donald. You thought the running backs did well even when they didn't have the ball. They, they did. They did. They were smart. Well, the, so the, the big thing is, first off, if I just had to make one glare, the Rams defensive line had no chance to really ruin the game. And they usually ruin games. 56 and 99 will ruin just about any team in football. Well, the Buccaneers not only pass protect pass protected well, right? And, yes, when Aaron Donald, you know, and, and by, you know, let's say Jameis Winston's in the shotgun and the back's to his left, all right? And, you know, there's, there you're the quarterback. So everybody put, put, your eye, put yourself in Jameis Winston's shoes, okay? Now, there's Aaron Donald over the left guard. He's on the edge of that outside shoulder of that left guard. Well, Ali Marpet, those guys, they could set inside, and the back would kind of chip his outside shoulder. So it's almost like a double team, but not really a total double team. Yeah. But Aaron Donald can see him, therefore he doesn't have that outside move available there. 
That was very smart, for one. Number two, hey, they just did a good job pass protecting. I got to give them credit, the, mm -hmm. the, the Buccaneers O-line. But the, really the credit goes to the offensive staff and slowing down Fowler and Donald, who have just about ruined everybody's game the first three, three weeks. Right. Because this is where it was. Patience in the run game, one. You want to stop an aggressive, you know, like we were talking about pass rush, like, oh, we get upfield, we get upfield. Hey, run the ball. Make them think about it. Oh, tire them out. Oh, gosh, it's a double team. All those things will wear you down for the pass rush. But the biggest thing, and I thought one of the best things the Bucks did, they did their best to keep the Rams in base defense. So you know, what, so what do you mean by that? Well, Ram, the Rams are a four-three. They're like a, a three-four hybrid team, but four D linemen, three linebackers would okay. be their base defense, right? And the big thing I mean by that is. The Rams, one of their greatest attributes is they want to really play like dime personnel. They want to put six DBs on the field or five DBs on the field, and they want to like just use their speed and Wade Phillips' creativity with coverage calls and things like that, right. and they just make the game like a blur because the other team's like, holy shit, they're fast. They're everywhere. It's unbelievable. What do I do? Aaron Donald's on me. I throw a ball, and the, I mean, the guy, as soon as he catches it, it's like right. pop, 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 and he's down. Like Everything is like, oh, we just made it out of that play. Yeah. Well, the Buccaneers said, screw that game. Let's make them put some of these linebackers. Let's put Clay Matthews on the field. Let's make Aaron Donald stop the run game. You know, let's put, I can't remember their other middle linebacker's name on the field. It's better than having to deal with, you know, all their multiple DBs and their team speed that way. So really within that, yeah, uh, Littleton, right. Thank you very much, Pete, in the, in the control room. Um, really within all that, though, yeah. You know, it simplifies the, the, the defense a little bit because you got to worry about the run game when a team has two tight ends in or three tight ends in. Or, you know, they're basically going – they had some times where they went 12, 12 personnel, one back, two tight ends, and one of the tight end moves back to like a fullback position. So they got in some traditional run sets – and they stayed patient with the run game. I know they didn't rush for 100 yards. I don't give a shit. The real thing is they rushed the ball 29 times, like yeah. legit rushes. And that's attempts sometimes are more important than the actual yards because the attempts just keep everybody honest. And, and Jones like I got said, 70. I mean, so 70. he was still productive. He was effective, exactly yeah. right. But the big thing is you have to slow down 56 and 99, and they did that, let alone Jameis Winston, Played yeah. awesome. So, yeah, what would you think of him? I mean, he played awesome. The second week in a row, he's played awesome. This is what's crazy about Jameis Winston. You know, it really is because, you know, history has told us this week he will throw seven picks and we'll go, <laughs> what the hell is wrong yeah. with Jameis Winston? Right. I hope that doesn't happen. But, really, the second half of the Panthers game, the Giants game last week, yesterday, this is why Jameis Winston, and he's shown glimmers of this every year. He's shown three, four, five-game stretches of doing this where you go, this is why he was the number one pick. Mm -hmm. I mean, because he's fearless in the pocket, and he's a pinpoint intermediate to deep ball thrower. And that's what he did yesterday. And the Rams, who don't like to play man-to-man, -man, they play a lot of zone coverage. Right. They just attack their zones. You know, like, oh, like little, you know. With the seams. Seams, right. Yeah. Little 10-yard out routes by the slot or the tight end or, you know, fake the straight seam route right up the middle and stop at like 12 yards and he'll put it on you. Just finding little gaps within the zone coverage and Winston with a strong arm and great anticipation and being fearless the way he is, he just yeah. tore them up with uh, Chris Godwin. He was, he was accurate. So uh, he, was, he was six for six behind the line of scrimmage from line, line of scrimmage to 20 yards deep. So the yeah. intermediate passes, right. 21 to 31, 68% for 268 yards and two of those touchdowns. So basically whatever he wanted to do. What do you think of uh, Chris Godwin? He had uh, targeted 14 times, 12 catches, 172 yards, a huge game, two touchdowns for him. He's the unforgotten man. I mean, there, there was obvious, you know, when, when Mike Evans was split out by himself, they usually rolled a safety over the top of him, played a cover two or two man type of look to take him out of the way. And yes, that leave, left you know, a lot of room and favorable matchups with three receivers versus zone coverage on the other side. And Godwin's a hell of a football player. He is. This is the reason Deshaun Jackson, they, don't, they didn't care about him being expendable and not being there. Yeah. yeah, he might not be the deep threat, but Godwin is great route runner, great with the ball in his hands, as you saw yesterday. He can play physically and break tackles, run people over sure. at the goal line. Um, but really a awesome number two wide receiver. 
And when you have him and then a guy like O.J. Howard and Cameron Brait to work the other side opposite him in the slot or, you know, in the seams, like I'm saying, it's tough to cover, especially when you're a zone defense. Zone defense, just think about if you're a linebacker, right? It's zone defense. And, oh, I'm kind of responsible for that tight end area, that seam tight end area that you're talking about. Right. Oh, play action fake. Oh, I got to – oh, gosh, okay, no, wait. It, he kept it. He kept it. And now you're getting back and – you know, the tight end's seven yards behind you, and you don't know exactly where he is, and Jameis right. Winston throws the hole. And that's – the Rams need to dabble in man-to-man -man a little bit more than they are. I think they're playing too much zone. But big story is great game plan by the Bucks. Did they get the short field? One time, yes. They just kept answering the bell. I think that's what I'm impressed by. And I really thought the, the, one of the, the big plays of the game for the Bucks, and, and we'll move on to the other side of the yeah. ball, is – it's there. It's 38-27, okay? okay, and 2-10 left in the fourth quarter, the second and five one. No, one? I'm going to oh. go to the Mike Evans, okay? This is just – I thought this was peculiar. Uh, maybe that was it. 12-10, uh, 12-10 in the fourth quarter. That's right. You're, yeah, might, you might have the one missing there. Oh. It's down there. I think you were right. Two ten, it said 2-10, and it's 12-10 in the fourth quarter. Oh, yeah, 12-10. Yeah, 12-10. 38-27, 12-10 right. yep. in the fourth quarter. That's it's right. second and five, and Rams go – all out, like no safety in the middle of the field, just three guys across the board, cover the three receivers, yeah. and Marcus Peters is unluckily on Mike Evans, which is like a disaster. They do a little play action fake, so the blitz kind of gets slowed down because they're going after the run for a second. They protect well, and as you saw, Jameis threw the proper ball down the middle of the field, and that was really the, that was really the point where I went, oh, my gosh, they got him. Yep. Because at 38-27, I was still going – they're, the Rams are just going to keep coming. I don't know if they're ever going to stop them. Sure. Uh, but that was a huge play. Um, also, I want to give uh, their kicker, Gay, okay, for the Buccaneers. Hit a huge – it was 28-20, okay? 28-20. Yeah. Okay. Um, we don't normally give kickers I know, but I give them good podcast. love because he had a 58-yard field goal to make it 31-20. Okay. Not only did it give them the 11-point lead, but if he had missed that field goal – the Rams were kind of rolling, and they're going to have the short field coming off that miss, and you're going to go, oh, him. gosh. There was some big pressure. So that was a yeah. ballsy call by Bruce Arians and a great kick by Gay. Uh, Matt Gay, Matt fifth Gay. rounder out of Utah. Is he Utah? That's what it was. I couldn't remember. Out but of Utah. Yeah, I was. Uh, it's as good as I've seen a team That's do. the last time we'll talk about a kicker. Yeah, okay, never that's again. it. I will never do it. I'm sorry I did it. <laughs> the hell with all of you. Um, but, yeah, I, I just was really impressed by the, the yeah. game plan of the Bucks. the – Offensive line not letting Fowler and Aaron Donald ruin the football game. Jameis Winston and God Godwin just tore their ass apart. And Rams defense moving forward, problems, issues here? Well, I think it? this will be something as a, a game plan going forward. I think you're going to see teams do this. They're going to go, well, you know, keep why? the base defense yeah, out there. Yeah, keep the base defense. Let's, let's as much slow as they them can. up. Let's try to get Aaron Donald a little tired within the run game and make him defend that. Because what, what we talked about, well, you weren't here last week, but what we talked about with I'm these. I'm always here in spirit. Okay, though. good. Thank yeah. you, spirit friend. Yeah. Is, um, <laughs> The Sunday night football game, Rams versus, versus Browns. The Browns played into their hands a lot of times. It was always spread out and, yeah, yeah we're going to throw and whatever else. And then the Rams could just pin their ears back and go, they okay, go let's go get Baker. We'll let's play get Baker. 13 defensive backs. Exactly. And, yeah. Right. And get after it. Cool. Right, right. All right. Bucks over versus Rams D. Yep. Get it out of here. Get that trash out of here. How okay. dare you do that Sorry to my that. artwork? It was just a copy. Gosh. Just a copy. Okay. You're right. This is the <laughs> original. Simile. You got the original. The original. Keep that one. Yes. Keep, that's a Mozart it's right It's a Mozart. There. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Well played. Uh, Rams O versus Bucks D. So okay. here was the most surprising thing. Yes, go ahead. I was ready it. to come in. So this is what I had my numbers. Yep. You know, I like to look at the numbers. Mm -hmm. So I had, you know, Jared Goff, 45 to 68. That's yeah. 15 more attempts than any other quarterback this week. Insane. Yet he was, his quarterback rating was 14th out of 24. So it wasn't like he was necessarily that productive with the 68 attempts. And only three of the 68 were more than 20 yards down the field. Yeah. By design, you know. Uh, I heard you on uh, Football Night in America. He, he said he might be getting confused at times out there. So I was ready to come in and have this be a, I told you that, you know, as you've said before, that Jared Goff's not the greatest quarterback ever. He's right. solid, but right. he's probably not going to live up to the number one billing. So yep. I thought you would come in here and, and crush him. Right. And that's not going to be the case. No, it's not going to be the case. It's not. And this is why you watch the film. I mean, this really is because TV can't tell you everything. 
Although you it, watched it on TV. I watched yeah. it on TV. <laughs> yeah. And I'm going to apologize and start pro football talk tomorrow. Really? To say that I was a little – because even today I was like, man, Jared Goff just looked a little off. And, you know, hey, the offense looked off. And I'm not sure if Jared Goff can carry them. It was one of the best games I've ever seen Jared Goff play. Wow. I mean, if not the best. I mean, yeah. I, I, I feel really good in saying that. First off, the Rams O-line got their ass whooped. I mean, whooped. Okay? Mm. Um, Vita Via, I always say his name wrong. Vita Vea. Vita Vea. Vita I always Vita. say it. Yeah, Vita Vea. <laughs> okay, Vita Vea and Sue are a load in the middle. Okay, so they were phenomenal against the run. Yeah. But they can push the pocket and disrupt the quarterback that way. Shaquille Barrett is the NFL defense MVP right now. You think so? I mean, there's there's no even like I don't think you can argue it. When you have nine sacks and you're forcing fumbles and intercepting passes. Yeah. I mean, he's been the most dominant defensive player I've seen in the sport till this point. I can't believe I'm saying that. I loved him when he was in Denver. I used to speak very highly of him on my old podcast. Um, but I, I, I didn't expect this kind of superstar. He was yeah. unblockable in this game. He whooped the shit out of everybody on the Rams D-line. Every one of them. He took a turn on Rams all line up until the Up until the final play. Up until the very end. Where he did the swim move and then forced the fumble. And right. And Sue got it and took it in. Exactly right. Right. I mean, he did so many good things. And let alone, like I said, the first interception by Goff, forced by Shaquille Barrett. Hitting him as he throws. Ball goes up in the air. Interception. Uh, third interception by uh, Jared Goff. It was a fourth and, fourth and two, okay? They're at the midfield line. The Rams mess up the pass protection, so somebody goes flying right up the middle. Jared Goff has to throw it, right? It's fourth and two. He's got to try to make something happen. It's yeah. fourth and two. Well, they have a little pick play. It's a one one route, one player design. There's nobody else to throw to. It's like a bunch, right? And the two guys are going to run straight, and the inside guy's going to kind of come out of three yards, and you're going to try to get a cheap first down that way, right? Well, not only was the protection bad, but Shaquille Barrett was on the end of the line of scrimmage there. He kind of busts up field, gets a hand on the ball, pops it in the air, interception. So forget about the sacks, the tip balls. It's all the other plays, too. He yeah. was all over the quarterback. So the Bucks D line whooped the crap out of the Rams O-line, okay, for one. And that's why Todd Gurley had 16 yards and Brown only had 14 yards, and they just said the hell with the run game because they knew it. So they were they were disruptive in not only – it wasn't like a situation where the Rams – because they didn't run a whole lot. They had 11 total yeah, rushing right. attempts here. Gurley had five. Malcolm yeah. Brown had five. The game didn't dictate it because they got no. down. But even when right. they tried, there was nothing there. Okay. And they, let's not forget, they got to back to 28-20 to did. where you can get back into the run game, and they, they weren't having it. That was not going to happen. But the big thing is this with Jared Goff, yeah. okay? Only one of the interceptions was his fault. He threw the one to Levante David. Levante David, like, made it look like he was in a blitz and then dropped out. Jared Goff was throwing a little under route. So my point is this. He was under duress. He took a beating in the game. I mean a beating. He got hit a lot. And he made a ton of big-time throws, Ahmed. I mean a ton where – I mean, and I'm not just saying, like, oh, the guy's wide open five yards over the middle of the field, and he got hit, and then the guy ran for 15 yards. And I know you said, like, the bombs weren't there and everything, but there was a lot of 15-yard outs, 12-yard outs, 20-yard routes right. into, like, tight, tight coverage, you know, crossing routes at 15 and 18 yards where the coverage was phenomenal, and he put the ball on the money with people around him. Right. And I got to give Jared Goff a lot of credit. Now, listen. Because that's what you said. It just to, yeah. You noted that here. Yeah. They were playing the three-deep zone. And so the blame for not going deep, that was basically what the Bucks were giving them. They were. The they game. were. They, they yeah. didn't give a whole lot of deep shots. Now, they had two chances. When they were down 21-17 at one point, he had a guy down the right sideline. He missed him. They ended up settling for a field goal. Okay? Yeah. The very next drive, now it's 31-20. He missed a deep post for a touchdown, too. Now, when you throw the ball 68 times, you're going to miss some throws. You know, again, so I don't look at it and go, oh, how could he miss those? I mean, how could he do that? There, there's guys all over football yesterday that won football games that miss throws like that, okay? Yeah. And it's, it's a lot easier said than done when you're getting your ass beat into the ground all game long. You know, sometimes, oh, there's a deep post, and, you know, you get it out of your hand just a hair quick because you're – People have been around you all game, and you, you see him, and you rush, and, oh, let me get it out because I got him. Yeah. Oh, I missed him. How did I miss him? Well, you missed him because your timing clock is off because right. you've had to throw it quicker. So, again, I'm not saying it was perfect, but I think it's encouraging 
because one of my issues with Jared Goff is that I, I don't know if he can carry the team like a franchise number one pick, $34 million a year, Ken. I saw things yesterday where I go, damn, he might be turning the corner and maybe he can turn, carry the team. Hmm. So kudos to Jared Goff hmm. and company. Okay. Uh, I, I was really impressed with, with, with what I saw there. It, and it was more of the... I'm reading the defense. I'm making plays. It wasn't necessarily a talent thing that you that you were surprised by. Yeah, right? was well, it a yeah, talent? Yeah, well, talent, talent was, too. Talent okay, too it was. It was the whole package. It was. It was the whole package. I mean, because yeah, I, I he's been served up what I call a lot of silver platter plays in his life. But Sean right. McVay, you've made it easier. Sean, you, who yeah. you like a lot, obviously. Right. Yeah, yeah right. And, and he's I, made it easier. He makes it easy on any quarterback. He does he has. exactly right. And there's, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, hey, Tom Brady gets a lot of silver platter throws too, and yeah. a lot of other great quarterbacks do. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. But yeah, I mean, Sean McVay is like was the king early on in Jared Goff's career of like, hey, here's a 20-yard completion. It's yeah. coming to you on a silver platter. If you can just put it in the area, he'll catch it. Um, but it's these kind of moments that make me feel good about a franchise-type quarterback. And, yeah, the Rams got their ass beat up front. That was the issue of the game for the offensive Rams' offensive line. side of the line. And the Bucks had a lot to do with that. They did. The Bucks, the Bucks brought it. And the Bucks could very easily be 3-1 and one if they didn't mess up a field goal at the I mean, end of last it, week. And from this game right here, a lot of times in the NFL you say, oh, that's a weird, that's a weird result, right? right. It's, a blip, it's a blip in the whole season of 16 games. You're going to get some weird results. Yeah. But the, the way you're talking about the Bucks and Shaq Barrett and – Jameis Winston and that offense, and then you have Bruce Arians. This is a team that could make a run. They're dangerous. They are dangerous. Yes, they are. And if, if Arians can stay a little patient with that run game and Jameis can, like, stay off of Tropic Thunderville, right? Yeah. Um, then they do have a chance because their D-line is not going to be pushed around by, many team, by no team in football. Uh, and Todd Bowles is a hell of a defensive coach. One more note, Todd Gurley played 76% of snaps. So that's good. If you're a Rams fan, yeah. that's good to see. It is right? a good he thing to see. He was out there in a, in a game that had a ton of offensive snaps. He was out there for three quarters. Yep, of them, so. no doubt. Yep. Okay. All, All right. right, we're going to go to uh, give me the headline. Oh, yeah. We, okay, yeah. Let me. we got some more headlines. We want to get to Chiefs O, Lions D in yep, a we'll second. Yep, we'll do that in a minute. Yep. Uh, let's go to – oh, I want to do Browns Ravens. Okay. And we have a picture. I don't, Pete, do we have a picture that we can pull up? So here we go. Here's the long run by uh, Nick Chubb. And so he's flying, and That's then look great. at look at Baker. Baker's flying too. Flying. We have to put this in. Uh, Chris and Ahmed looks at look at pictures. I like that That'll very have to be much. Right. In he's there. Uh, it's flying formation. It's the uh, flying that's formation. That's what they're doing. It's the right. He's he's, dis he's distracting. He's showing his his ability to be a raven and fly down the field. Oh, okay? <laughs> well, that's true. Maybe right? he was uh, he's throwing some ravens, shade. Right. Uh, okay. So my headline for this is. We should have listened to Chris earlier and run Nick Chubb a lot earlier in the season. That's Damn, my headline. That's a good headline because yeah. my headline was, I told you so. <laughs> right, there it is. I mean, thank you. Yeah. Uh, yes. Nick this Chubb's is, good. Nick Chubb is good. The Browns O-line, they're best at run blocking. The success of the Browns at the end of last year was all through their run game. Baker Mayfield was underneath the center a lot yesterday. All the things I've been saying, come on, mm -hmm. Cleveland, let's get back to what made us good. Let's not get too enamored with just the fact that we got Odell and passing weapons and just go, oh, what a run game. Who cares about a run game? We're going to throw it 50 times a game. Yeah, well, we you're going to got Odell. Lose. We don't want Odell to be mad. Right. We don't want him to get upset. Right. I don't think Odell's going to get mad. I don't. They're going to find ways to feed him and figure that whole thing and out. And they fed his friend. Right. They Jarvis fed. Landry, 167 yards. Right. And I bet you, I mean, you know, again, Odell's had a, a, a lot of attention on him the first three games. I mean, teams are trying to stop Odell, and I'm sure Baltimore did uh, too. And it looked like Marlon Humphrey could have got arrested, you know, for for like assault and battery a few times yesterday when I saw in some of the yeah. some of the the clips I saw. Um, but yeah, just a real. The Browns defense is good. No one's giving credit to the Browns defense because of the stars on the offense. Um, Steve Wilkes is phenomenal. Their D line's good, and they play smart coverages behind it. And when the Browns mm. can run the football like this, because they're not a great pass protecting O, as you heard me say, yep. you know, th this gives their O line a chance. Just like we were talking about with the Bucks or against the Rams. You know, you play a good defensive line like the Ravens. When you're coming downhill all game long, run, 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 run. The defensive coordinator gets scared to blitz because he goes, "Man, if we have one guy get off the wrong gap, it's gonna get we're gonna get gashed." Um, 
And it just uh, was a really good performance by the Browns altogether. And Baker Mayfield was better. Better in the pocket. Be be definitely not as jumpy. I mean, he had moments of, oh, jumpy, I want to leave the pocket. But then he like he was like, oh, wait, my coach told me not He's to. Like, yeah. I want me to stay in there. Coach told me that he heard Chris say that I need to stay in the pocket more. We need to run. It's right. working so right. far. Listen to what I say, Cleveland. So, and defensively for Cleveland, I mean, you got to give them credit. Yes. They, you know, Lamar Jackson, they've been putting up a lot of points, a lot of yards. I got a, uh, okay, a damn, okay, okay. I do have one. I'll damn, throw one okay. early here. Who you got? Joe Schobert. Is that yeah. how you say his, is yeah. his name? Yeah, that's how Fourth you say Fourth year it. guy out of Wisconsin. 17 tackles, most in the NFL in week four. He's a player. I doubted this guy for a long time. Uh, I really did. I'm not a big fan of white linebackers. Because okay? out of Wisconsin. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I, I get you know, that. When you're white and you're playing middle linebacker, you got to prove a little extra to me, okay? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, Luke Keekley's been... good. Okay, look, Pete gets in my ear and goes, Luke Keekley? Yeah. Oh, there's one in all 32 teams you brought out, huh? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Brian Urlacher. Brian, oh, there's Brian another Urlacher, one this yeah. decade. Whoa. Okay. They stand out. <laughs> okay. And yes. now you can add Joe Schobert to the list. Yes, and now yeah, he's not quite in their territory what? yet. 17. But I like that you said that. Yeah. And the and the Browns linebackers, even though they're not stars, they're good at everything. They're good at the run. They're athletic against the pass. And they give them a fighting chance, no, no doubt about it. Just a great win for the Browns, answering the critics and all the bull crap. We're back on the Browns bandwagon. We're yep. back. It just They're, takes one good performance, yep. and we're back. Let's go, Browns. Uh, but I'm off. No, I'm not off. I was going to say I'm off the Bills bandwagon, but they look good enough. Although quarterback play was a little bit of an Holy issue. Holy crap, yes. Uh, give me the headline for Patriots-Bills. Holy secondary? That's what I want to say. For both teams. Well, for, you're right. For holy, both teams. holy secondary. It's like the Spider-Man theme. Holy secondary, Batman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Crossing yeah. Marvel characters. Yeah, I was going to say, is that Spider-Man or Batman? I don't know. It's you another, and movies. Let's it's not, another thing that don't I... Don't you go there, okay? <laughs> you're right. Do you know Batman wears all black and Spider-Man's red and blue? You I did know used that? To, uh, yes. Okay. Because I used to watch the Adam West Batmans. Remember those back in the day that were kind of cheesy and funny? No. The, like the, old the old shows? The old show. Oh, yeah. yeah okay, the old yes, show. Yes, yeah. that's right. Yes. I used to watch those when we were little. Reason. They when used we to have reruns on, right? And they were just, it was like a comedy show. Right. Not a comedy anymore. Right. Yeah, you're right. I shouldn't have gone there. But I like your holy secondary to both secondaries because you're yeah. right. I mean, we t we're gonna. I wanted to talk about the the New England Patriots because of the interceptions and they're so phenomenal that way. Yeah. But damn, the Bills, Sean McDermott. Nobody knows how to defend New England and Josh McDaniels' offense better than Sean McDermott. He was phen phenomenal yeah. in what they did. Brady really, didn't look good. No, he, he, he did not. Happy or comfortable or no, whatever. No, and and they made him uncomfortable last year. You know, remember last year though, the Bills just had no offense whatsoever. So their defense was constantly in bad positions, and the and the Patriots would finally just wear them out. Yeah. I mean, hey, Josh Allen was an issue yesterday. We get, we gotta like rear yeah. it in, big guy. How, we, how upset are you with that guy? Well, we gotta rear it in one for your for your physical safety. Okay. Like, it, it, it's, it's a little Deshaun Watson sometimes where it's like every play is the last play of the game. And, gosh, it's just he takes so many big hits and he never yeah. dies in the pocket. He's got people hanging on him. He's still trying to throw it. Sure. But the interceptions are inexcusable. There's no, nothing I can de say in defense of it. And this is the, the bad of Josh Allen right now. He can do a lot of really awesome, great stuff where you go, man, this guy is so fun to watch. But in a game like this, when you know your defense has the, the beat on an offense, you got to rein it in, big guy. You got to rein it in. He did not rein it in. He put them in a lot of tough spots, but they hung in there. Uh, to their credit, the Buffalo Bills. The Buffalo Bills, they're not going anywhere. I really feel confident that they're going to be in this playoff conversation through and through all the way to the end of December. But, again, another team, New England. Yeah. I know all we want to talk about is Brady and Belichick. Brady and Belichick. Right. Okay, well, Belichick deserves some credit because he is, like, basically saying – you to all the defensive coordinators who have left him the last two years and he's like I'm still the man yeah <laughs> I'm still the man okay yeah don't forget that I am thy teacher uh and yeah what they're doing on the defensive side of the ball is phenomenal the different packages they bring up front the, the coverage all of that but I had a fun that was a fun game I was disappointed I didn't see the dildo you're like yeah did, was, did it happen or no I not that I know of I mean I always like to see the dildo in that game it didn't happen disappointing but that was it maybe it got confiscated maybe the technology there, well, the dildo d uh, detecting technology has gotten better yes in well, Buffalo you probably would know something about what, that huh? why do you say that <laughs> I, don't, I don't know <laughs> it's just you left it on the tee for me oh, I've detected a lot in my day <laughs> 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 I know a dildo when so, I see it <laughs> so two uh, two top five defenses yes. in football we yeah. think right yeah. both those Patriots, Bills? Uh, without yeah. a doubt, they are, and they are literally number one and number two in football right now. And last year, you know, just so people know, Buffalo's defense was number two in football last year. 
It was, it's been good. And we know the Patriots defense statistically yards-wise wasn't great last year, but they're always good as far as points scored. Yeah. This year, they're just playing all dominant across the board, and it's, it's amazing to see. I want to do Vontez Burfecht real quick. Okay. He's been suspended for the remainder of the 2019 season for another uh, quote-unquote cheap shot. In a, in a game that was fairly positive yeah. for the for the Raiders against the Colts, mm -hmm. um, do you have any any thoughts on on Perfect on that? Whole no, situation? I mean this is strike seventy nine. Yeah. I mean, of course you you deserve to be suspended for the year. There's just, you know, again, okay, so the Josh Allen hit, right? Yeah. I don't think it was dirty. It was just physical play. From he Jonathan got hit. Jones yeah, from Jonathan Jones. I don't think it was dirty. Does maybe he launch? I don't know. Jonathan Jones has got a 240-pound quarterback running at him full yeah. speed. He's kind of bracing himself for contact. Then Josh Allen gets hit from behind as he's kind of loading up the hit. I don't think he's a dirty player. Did he try to take a really aggressive shot at the quarterback? Yeah, probably. If I was the defensive coach, I'd be like, good job. I'm just sorry. That's called football. Yeah. I love Josh Allen. I don't want to see anybody get hurt, but it's still football. Vontez Perfect. It's not always football. It's WWF and WWE sometimes. You got a guy on the ground getting – you don't need to run full speed and launch at his head and try to, like, knock his head off that way. Yeah, he deserves to be out for the year. I'm yeah. sorry, but that's just uh, the facts. And when you're on strike 79, that's what happens. So, in this game, I, I think – a couple things. Gruden yep. cracked the code for the Indy defense. He did. Oh, right. he deserved a lot of credit. No doubt about that. Yes. Josh Jacobs, 79 yards, a couple catches for 29. We, you talked about him being a weapon, kind of the Alvin Kamara type weapon for John Gruden. Right. Looks like they're going to try to use him in that. I know he's been a little sick, a little under the weather, I think, the, early on this season. Derek Carr, the numbers weren't great. 21 to 31, 189 yards, a couple touchdowns. No. But yeah. They got to find ways to generate some down the field passing in Oakland. That's their big, biggest issue. But where Gruden proved his worth, the first drive of the game, which is all Gruden. That's your first 10, your first 12, your first 15. I mean, these are plays that Gruden came into the game with and said on a meeting on Saturday night before the game, here's the first 15 plays of the game. Here we go. Yeah. Get ready. Get it in your mind right now. I like these plays because I've designed them to screw them over. And I don't think they'll be able to make these adjustments on the first drive. They might adjust after that, but we're going to get them right now early on. And that's where he was phenomenal. Then they get the ball back, and he has a little trick play to Trevor Davis where they kind of fake the toss to the right. Trevor and he Davis, comes back yeah, yeah. And, and reverse around. and end around. Right. Second fastest sprint speed by a ball carrier this week Ooh. in the NFL. What did he get to? 21.31 miles so per hour. So it be on Nick Chubb? Nick Chubb was Nick, first. Nick and, Chubb beat yep, him. Yeah. And Trevor Davis was second. So yeah. there's a weapon. Yeah, he, he, he certainly has the capabilities of being a downfield threat. He did that a little bit with the Green Bay Packers. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, hopefully that can be the case. But, you know, I just thought Gruden, he, he again, I was imp I did not think the Raiders' defense would be able to hang in there. I think that's where I was shocked. Mm -hmm. I thought the great blue wall uh, that um, – was built in Indianapolis, that O-line, especially after the way the Vikings ran the ball in Oakland last week. Sure. I thought they would just smash this Raider front. They played really well up front, and Gruden stayed patient with the run on his side of the football, and Derek Carr never made a big mistake or did anything like that, managed the game properly, and they came out with a win. I'd have to go back and look, but that might be the best win in the John Gruden return. Ooh. That might be the best one. You might be right. On the road I'm at Indy. Think, yeah. early, early start, which right. has been tough for and them. Then, and then the big play was the, the safety, Eric Harris. Eric because Harris. the game was very much in doubt. I was going, oh, God, the Colts are going to come back. Like, they always do. Yeah. They're the Colts. And uh, Eric Harris kind of, you know, undercutting, I think it was like a post or a, a slant route and pick six. That, that really put the dagger It was good because he Colts. was kind of in no man's land, but it ended up – I think he was reading Brissett. Yeah, I think so, been. too. I, I think he – I think he – I think Brissett was fooled, and if I'm remembering this play correctly, he was kind of following an inside receiver and fell off yeah. and got underneath the outside receiver, right? Yeah, yep. and uh, yeah, that was a good heads-up play by him. And went 30 yards for a touchdown. Okay, yep. so Raiders got the win. Yep. Uh, so uh, you know, It's ho hockey season. Hockey's coming back. Are you involved in hockey too? I am, actually. I, I'm doing crap. my first NHL Live in November. In November? Yep. Okay, why, why are they waiting so long? Why in October? It's what a you good got question. You yeah. know what? I'm going to go ask them. Okay, good. Let's get your be, ass to work. Yeah. But holy shit, it's hockey season. Yeah. And I don't, I mean, it's unreal. I got so much respect for these damn guys. I feel like they play all year long. They play <laughs> they so do. many games. They do. They kill each other. Yep. They're missing teeth and pieces of their face, and they mm -hmm. still keep playing. Mm -hmm. But hey, opening night this Wednesday, the Blues are raising the banner for the mm -hmm. first time ever versus the Caps, okay? 
And then the Sharks are in Vegas for a nightcapper. Nothing like a nightcapper in, in Vegas, baby. Oh, my. <laughs> Vegas, baby. <laughs> you know, a little nightcapper there, but that'll yeah. be a good one. Sharks, Vegas, they've been in playoff teams all year round. Mark's, I think I'm um, in in October now. Oh, oh, yep, there he is. He, oh, <laughs> Mark Bellotti, one of the NHL producers, yes. is he hears me doing the read. Um, yep, I'm going to tell him to put you to work more here. Earlier, okay? yeah. Uh, but rumors about an NHL podcast coming soon. Yes, Really? Yeah. Okay. NHL? I didn't even I've never heard that before. Yeah. That's breaking news for me. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Hey, not all of Mozart's paintings were perfect. Yeah. Huh? That was beautiful, man. Hey, the end result though, that sucker's gonna sell for a million dollars. Hey, 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 hey! How about those cheese? <laughs> I love him. Andy Reid is the best. Like one of my fa I'm rooting for the Chiefs really because of him more than anything. And, and the quote's not right. The quote's not quite right, right? Well, no. Which I Well, honestly, I mean, Mozart's art doesn't sell for good. Da Vinci's songs don't sell very well either. <laughs> so when I, I got to admit, full disclosure, when I first heard the quote, I was like, oh, cool. That's a pretty interesting quote. Maybe I'll use that. And what then I heard you and, you, you, and, you and Mike Florio talking about it. And yeah, Mozart didn't do paintings. Although, honestly, the quote's not necessarily invalidated by that because not all of His, Mozart's paintings... If he did paint any, not all of them were perfect. In fact, none of them no, were probably perfect. No, no they so were maybe not. It just yeah. meant something different. Um, uh, Mozart, though, maybe his paintings were his great musical thing sheet there. Yeah, that's um, right, yeah. That, you know, I don't yeah, know what do you call true. that? His, uh, his songs. His music. His music sheets. Right, his music sheets, <laughs> right. Very much there. <laughs> okay, um, we're going I am deep, deep, for Andy Reid. Like, deep dive. Deep dive. Into what was, I was glued to it, being from Michigan and yeah. a, a, a long-time suffering Detroit Lions fan. Yep. Uh, I, I, this game gave me hope and optimism, and it gave me a little, uh, I'm like, this team might actually be good. Yeah. So Chiefs O, Lions D, or Lions O, Chiefs D. Where do you want to start? Well, well let's go with the, uh, the the big one, the Chiefs O versus Lions D. You okay. got anything there that you want to uh, pepper me with there, first off? Yes, I do, actually. I, I've got I've got something that I want to throw at you. Here it is. Da -da 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 -da. Patrick Mahomes, no touchdowns. That's pretty good. <laughs> that is, yes. Um, worked the middle of the field expertly, but here's the big thing for Yeah, this is what I wanted to to throw to you. Yeah, okay. Uh, 0 for 9 on passes that traveled at least 20 yards past the line of scrimmage. Yeah, rare, right? So that's very rare. Very rare. Um, I don't know if that was because of something the Lions did or if the Chiefs just were not executing, but what'd you, what'd you think? Okay, um, it, it's a few things, and, and just in my opinion from what I saw on film and, and my notes. Okay, one, I think Mahomes was a little off yesterday. Okay. He missed, he missed a few throws, like, you know, Oh, there's a deep cross for a 25-yard gain, and he oh, it's just off the fingertips, yep. or you know, just missed a few plays like that. He was playing in a dome for the first time. It freaked him out having a roof. Like, yeah, he's like, what the hell is this thing? I don't <laughs> like roofs. <laughs> yeah. You Where, can't contain this air show. Where's the sun? Uh, so I think he was a little off for yeah. one. Okay, uh, I think that the Lions' game plan might have caught the Chiefs off guard a little bit. Okay, and I so? say that because. I felt like I saw a lot of repeat concepts from the, the Kansas City Chiefs, which you don't see a whole lot. I saw a few plays where I say I could say, eh, I saw this play like five times already. Hmm. I saw this play four or five times already. Um, I don't think they expected to get the plan of attack that the Lions threw at them uh, that way. You and said the Lions defense was doing Belichick things. Belichick things. And when I say that, I mean like, you know, there's, here's, you know, Travis Kelsey's lined up to the right. He might not be at the traditional, like, put your hand down on the, tight end, on the, on the ground, but he's just like a yard away from the tackle or two right. yards standing up like a receiver. The defense end would hit him, right, before he rushes. Things like that. Hmm. That's what they do. Um, combination coverages. But I think the big thing that might have caught Kansas City by surprise, and this caught me by surprise when I turned on the film too, they played man, in my account, every play of the game except for one. Man-to-man -man wow. coverage every freaking play. Now, we're some of those two-man, and for all those out there going, what the hell is two-man? Two safeties deep, five man-to-mans underneath, which allows you to squat on shorter routes, right, because you got two people behind you, so right. you can be aggressive on the short stuff. But I'm going to just – a variety of man-to-man -man coverages. So they threw a lot of coverages at them, but they were all man-to-man -man based. It was hmm. one robber. It was one rat. It was one funnel. It was – uh, what else am I missing? Um, two man, as I said, which is 
very similar to that in general. It's, like, it's just man-to-man -man with the 2D. Uh, right. I wanna, I'm want to. missing one other coverage I wanted to say. I mean, they mixed up their fronts and their looks and how they were doing it. They played two-man with a three-man rush and then would double people. You know, uh, they did a lot of different things. They did one play of what I saw Belichick and company do against uh, Kansas City in the AFC Championship game, which was, was basically... No, there, there was a safety in the middle of the field, but he was doubling Travis Kelsey, and then everybody else was playing man-to-man. -man. Ahmed, they're playing man-to-man, -man, okay, and everybody's man across the board, uh, strong safeties man on Travis Kelsey, and you go, win. who's going to cover the backs? Right. And there's five D linemen down. And whatever way the back went, that defense end took the back. And then the other one knew he could rush to create the fourth one. Mm. Oh, the back went the other way? Okay, I'm this DN. I'll take the back. Now you can rush. Just a lot of stuff like that. But the big thing is, um, and I just couldn't get over how well they covered them regardless. I mean, uh, 27, Coleman, okay, Justin Coleman. Yep, Walker, 21. Those two stood out. Justin Coleman, first off. He really made life hard on Sammy Watkins, okay? And I think this, this is like, you know, two things. Justin Coleman's a really good football player, so that's the first thing I want to say. Yeah. I mean, he's maybe better than I gave him credit for, and that's why Patricia brought him there because Patricia had him in New England, and then he went to Seattle, and then he came to Detroit. Yeah. So he's got, he's got knowledge of him. But I was just really impressed with his man-to-man -man ability to stay with Sammy Watkins. And, and all of them were, were punching the ball out. It seems like him included. They, they just, yeah, he punched Sammy out, Watkins out one time, too. And, that there's, and all the thing I'll say, is too, is it proved to me that Sammy Watkins is not in the class of Julio's or Tyreek's or Odell's or, you know, whoever else is those. Mike Evans, he's sure. not that class of the receiver. Because you couldn't get away with playing those guys the way they played Sammy Watkins. Okay, Sammy Watkins is really good. I think what I would chalk Sammy Watkins up to, though, at this point of his career is a really low-end number one or a great number two, okay? Yeah. He's not a, like a game-breaker number one wide receiver. So really impressed with him. You said number tw uh, 27, Justin Coleman. Or yeah. no, not number 27, 21, excuse me. Tracy Walker. Walker, okay? yeah, free safety. Yeah, been playing free safety for them. He did a really good job in man-to-man -man situations against Travis Kelsey. Where Patricia's brilliant, just like I talk about with McDermott, like McDermott can play these zone defenses. He can play cover four, but he'll tweak the rules of cover four according to the game plan on a week-to-week -week basis, right? Okay. To where it's always zone, but McDermott, you just go like, damn, everybody always seems to be dropped out right where the quarterback's trying to throw the ball, right. which is great breakdowns. Well, what New England and Patricia do, because he's from New England, they like to play man, and they like to play man a lot. And what he does is he breaks it down to where, yeah, they got to play man, but they're really well coached on the route combination. So when they line up, and let's just say it's two tight ends to the left and two receivers to the right, like right away, the corners who are covering those two receivers to the right, they have like a dictionary of things the coach told them all week. Oh, when the outside receiver goes straight, Okay, that means the slot either goes on a five yard out or a 12 yard out. So right. they have these plays to be ready for that give them an advantage to be all over guys in man to man coverage. Got it. And that's where it was really uh, awesome altogether. Coleman played every snap, he played all 70. Uh, Tracy Walker played all but four. So yep. they're on the field most of the time. The, the question is can they do this if. Tyreek Hill was out there, or I don't if, know. You know, that, that would be a da it would have been very dangerous if Tyreek Hill was out there. They yeah. didn't have Darius Slay either, so that kind of made things True. interesting. True, equals it out. Yeah, but or, I don't know if you can ever really play Tyreek Hill that way. Or can they do this if there's a running game for that they fear from yes, the Chiefs, right. which they didn't have? Well, I would like the Chiefs to be more patient with the run game. You know, Andy had little moments of where he tried to do it. It's either got to be that or more creative screens. Either way, to take advantage of that kind sure. of thing. So. That's Le one thing. I, I looked. I looked at Lashawn yeah. a little bit too. Um, so they never, as to your point, they yep. never stacked the box with Lashawn. He didn't. Right. He didn't face a stacked box the no. entire game. No, he did not. And running up the middle between the guards and the center, six carries, seven attempts. Ooh. So, uh, you know, I, six I think carries seven yards. You mean? Oh, six. I'm mean, sorry. Six yeah. carries, seven yards. Yeah. yeah. So, so his runs were on the edge, all of them, right? And Off he only the tackle, broke a, a one, one run, yeah, really. one yeah, had one a, called back. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I think he's getting a lot of praise and how Andy Reid's using him, yeah. but I don't know how, I don't know how big of a weapon he, he is going to be. As no, go I don't know, here. you know, Andy Reid, yeah, that's one thing, if we're going to sit here and dissect him a little, I'd like them to be a little bit more advanced in their run game. Yeah, they do, just for reasons like this. 
for New England in the AFC Championship game when they played them there. Okay, I'm putting them in the AFC Championship game against each other already. Yeah. Okay, they got yeah. the automatic buy with that secondary and Belichick's yeah. wrinkles. He'll throw at you. You got to have something like that. The 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 biggest thing that I took away, the the Chiefs need more pick plays. Right, they can't let people play them man to man like this. They got to find ways to not only pick on the outside, more sure. rubs and picks on the inside. There's a million ways to do it. They got to improve that aspect altogether. Um, and what, what's wrong with playing one on one ball outside? That's the other thing I look at them and go, man, you got one of the greatest throwers ever. Yeah. What? How come Sammy Watkins? We can't just run a go, a comeback, an out route, a comeback, another go. Sure. Fake the out route and go. You know what I mean? Things like that. You can work basketball, the one-on-one -on -one game. Basketball, right? Exactly yeah. right. Sometimes you got to do that. Like you saw Aaron Rodgers on Thursday night. Devontae Adams. Oh, it's one-on-one? -on -one? Hey, f*** the rest of you guys. I'm going to work him because I know he'll beat his guy and I'll throw right. strikes to him all day. I think they need to incorporate a little of that in their offense. The fourth and eight was a killer at the end of the game. 155 yeah. to go. If they would have stopped him, they would have won the game to the Lions. But uh, it was man-to-man -man again. Man-to-man so -man again. they had no one there. Yep. Is that what happened? It is exactly what happened. It's a three-man rush, okay? They're trying to stop all the weapons in the pass game, which they've been phenomenal all game long. Um, but, yeah, three-man rush. They're playing two-man, two safeties deep, man-to-man -man underneath. They're trying to double Travis Kelsey. Well, when you rush three, it's fourth and eight. The Red Sea parted. Mahomes saw it. He ran and got the first down. The very next play, okay? It's a three-man rush once again. Now they're playing one robber. And for everybody willing, what the hell is one robber, okay? One robber is man-to-man -man across the board. One safety is deep. And the other safety is in the middle trying to rob a play, right? Okay. He's trying to rob a crosser, rob anything like that. I'm just right. kind of playing the eyes of the quarterback, and when I see him, I'm going to try to rob the pass, right? That's what a rob robber is, okay? So that's what he's trying to do there. They're doing that. They're within that because they're doing the three-man rush. They have an extra guy. They're doubling Travis Kelsey again. Right? They're, this is Belichick. Yeah. I'm not going to let you beat us with the guy that we see you beat everybody with on a weekly basis. Right. right? So he's not going to do that. Well, not only is he doubled, the defense end, one of the three rushers, also jams Kelsey and then rushes. Kelsey gives up. He gives up. He just goes, shit, I can't run my route. I'm not going to. I'm just going to stand here. And he yeah. literally just stands there. He's supposed to run a shallow cross. He just stands there. Mahomes buys a little time, and as he's buying time, the guy's covering Kelsey, look at Mahomes, and they leave Kelsey. And then Mahomes gets back to him and throws to him. Wow. And that was really all it was. And then he got out of bounds, and, of course, that set up the drive. To, yep. that, that really were the two big plays of that drive that helped them win the football game. They did just enough. Yep. And one thing I want to say before we turn the page yeah. is, although you already turned the page, yeah. is with the pitch back from Kelsey on the one play to – we, I played, was that uh, amazing? I played flag football right. in college. Yeah. I had the 29th ranked flag football team at Syracuse. No yeah. big deal. We were top 30. Yeah. Um, but there was this one team from Ohio, a college in Ohio, yeah. that that's what they, they just did the laterals. They just, it was a whole lateral game. And I, want, I do wonder sometimes, I, I know it's, if you mess it up, you a turnover, and that obviously is the, the penalty yeah. for doing it. Right. I do wonder if there are opportunities to do more laterals and design plays there, i don't know it there, might be too dangerous but uh, yeah that's really all it comes down to there is probably opportunities it's just like coaches are scared i mean the lateral is cool that was amazing those are two legends i mean those are two guys yeah. that are going to the, the hall of fame that if i screw this up no one's gonna yell you know well, yeah. i'm not gonna get cut and like as we always <laughs> talk about like the game slowing down like the game slow motion of those two yeah they're like oh yeah it's a road game and there's eighty thousand. Yeah. they don't like so it's yeah. so like easy for them. That's why they're relaxed and always having a good time, LaShawn, Mahomes, Kelsey. Yeah. So, you know, Mahomes has made them ballers, and it's just kind of all filtered throughout the team. But you're right. But what you're scared of is what? Mm -hmm. You know, the University of Texas won a national championship because Reggie Bush tried to do that shit. Yeah. They were going to have to blow us out of the Rose Bowl. Yeah. We're about to go down 21 nothing. And he tried to pitch it, and we got the ball, and the game was never the same. Yeah. So that's what scares coaches, right. that shit. I know. Yeah. I know. It was just cool to see. Yeah, it was cool. It was uh, cool. Lions O, Chiefs D. Lions O, Chiefs D. The headline for you, and it was for me. I mean, I love, I, I love Barry Sanders. He's going to be my all-time favorite player of all time growing up in Michigan. But I'll tell you what. All-time favorite player of all time? All-time favorite player of all time. Damn, he's so all-time. He's, he's even, uh, even my other all-time favorite players, he's all-time favorite of <laughs> um, But number two really is Matthew Stafford. <coughs> I love Matthew Stafford. Good. He just has I'm the glad gunslinger. to hear you say that. 
He, uh, he's, he's gotten criticized for some of the interceptions back in the day, but it's like you're playing on a team that's not very good that right. needs to make things happen. Exactly. And a lot of times he does that, and I thought it was a great game. And so I was, I was happy to see you say that Matthew Stafford looks awesome. Awesome. I mean, he's really played pretty damn good the whole year. And uh, this is still an offense that I think is kind of finding its way. But, hey, they're running the football. Their O-line has potential to be, like, good, special good. I really think it does. I mean, they, they got everything you need there. Um, you know, Daryl Bevel, you know, a guy that I used to criticize in Seattle a little bit, his running game is a little more diverse. His passing game, even though it's not as diverse as I'd like it to be, it's still got everything you need to be successful, okay. especially when you have a guy like Stafford. And if you stay consistent with the run game, the play-action pass can be really uh, beneficial. And it was. And I just thought, yeah, Stafford played phenomenal. They really did. I mean, bottom line is the two turnovers, right? Yeah. That really lost them the game. There's just no other way I can say it. You know, the strip sack fumble on Stafford, you know, then the carry on Johnson stupid reach out in a pile. That yeah. was just that was a little bonehead there. Uh, unlucky too. I mean, but either way, those were that was a huge turning point in the game. They were controlling the flow of the game and really had the Chiefs on their ropes and kind of let them off the hook there. The Chiefs defense, and I know you said this yeah. week number one, you say it's better. Yes. You, the defense is better. Right. Do you still feel like that now from watching another game film with them? Do you feel like this defense is, is improved from the last couple of years? I do think it's better, okay? It's still not great. I do think it's better than years past. Um, again, this Chiefs, who, the Chiefs defense is never going to have, like, great statistics because, like I've told you, why? Why Did I tell you this? Why? You why, may have told me. Well, why the Chiefs? Why? Like, think about what the Chiefs defense has to deal with every week. Their own offense scores in three plays, right. okay? So they're never like, hey, you guys rest. We'll do a bowl control <laughs> drive here, right? Right. And everybody knows they're playing Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs, so they're like, unleash the vault. Yeah. We need every creative play we've ever had in our right. lives, and we need to take chances that we would never take against anybody Which else. Which we saw the Baltimore Ravens go for fourth down exactly. early in the game. Exactly. So yeah. they're, they're in a little bit of a, you know, uh, a tough spot that way because people throw everything in the kitchen sink at them when it comes to that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, so, but this is, uh, if one thing I could say about the yep. Chiefs that I'd like to see them do. Okay. You know, Belichick, Patriciaville, this is what they would do. At some point in a game like this, they got to take away something. You can't just let teams run the ball down your throat and Stafford throws for 20-yard throws every time he drops yeah. back to pass. One of those things has to be canceled out. So my, my two cents of just watching them would be, I, I'm not, just get big up front. Get big up front. Like, you know, I see the Detroit Lions because of Belichick or Belichick. They play that bare front where they have a defense alignment over the center and the two guards a lot through the game. And then they play pass coverage behind it. So they basically go, hey, we're going to put big people here and make your run game tough, but then we can figure out some cool route combinations in the back. I would like to see the Kansas City Chiefs go, like, go inside. And let me just make sure I pull up the right names here because I'm going to choke here. Okay. So I want to see them put Derek Nandi, all right, their defensive tackle out of Florida State, 6'1", 310 pounds, right? Yeah. I want to see them put um, number 98, Xavier Williams, at the other defensive tackle, okay, 6'2", 309. I want Chris Jones at defense end, okay? I want Chris Jones at defense end, which is a, hu a gigantic human being at 6'6", 308 at defense end. Yeah. And then you have Frank Clark at the other defense end. At the very least right there, I think they'll be able to go into games and go, you're going to have a hard time running the ball on us. Hmm. And then they can put some more eggs in to stop the pass game basket right. that way. I just they gotta figure out something. You're right. I mean, you're right. They I mean, do I don't know if I'm right, but that's just Johnson. the things I was Well, Carry on Johnson ran for 100, 125. Yes. And he did it up the he 50, he 50 of his um, yards were right up the middle. Were they? Center or guard. There so you go. A, a huge chunk up the middle. I would like to see them do something like that. They need to they need to start being a little more creative in what they want to do. I don't know what it is they want to take away, but I just think in a game to game basis, they gotta figure out the one thing they want to take away and go with that, and then adjust off of that to whatever the team has to do. But you can't just like go, oh, we're going to yeah. play sound defense, but really never take anything Bend, away. but don't break. Yeah, they're not talented yeah. enough, enough to yeah, do that. Sure. They're just not talented enough. Can I give one more note on Matt Stafford? Please. Um, they have a, a rating for most aggressive quarterback in the week. That means how many, what percentage of your pass attempts were in a window of one yard or less? Oh, gosh. Matthew Stafford, the most aggressive quarterback of the week, 32% of his passes in tight windows. Laser and still beams. was really good. Laser beams. You know who the next most aggressive was in the NFL this past week? Oh, don't tell me. Hold on. 
over just people into tight windows. Ooh. Just tight windows, percentage of passes into a tight window. Okay, okay, okay. Which can be good, right? But yeah, can be it not can good. be, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it can be good until you get picked off and right. then you're screwed. Okay, hmm. Um, I am going to go, I want to, mm, Aaron Rodgers? No. 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 Who? Gardner Minshew. Minshew. Yeah. <laughs> yep, he, the magic Minshew magic once hey, again. He's not gun shy. I'll say that. And much. then it was Daniel Jones, and then it was Josh Allen. So Josh Allen, not in a good way. Yeah, like, right. Trying to That's a little too tight. Right. Exactly uh, okay. right. Does that close the book on that one? Yeah, that closes the book on that. I think we okay. hit it all there. Okay, good. I got rid yep. of that one. All right. Uh, and a, uh, a couple more headlines here. Let's wrap up a couple games. Yeah. Washington Giants. Well, um, headline. Uh, no, I mean, headline is positive about one rookie quarterback. We're not sure about the other yet. Jones is ready or is better than Haskins from now to the rest. This is what we knew, right? Yeah. This is we knew this coming in, and you said yeah. this. Jones is probably better prepared day one. Yes. Haskins is going to take some time. Yeah, Haskins is going to take some time, and. Uh, I guess I, I would, you know, and, and there's all these rumors about Jay Gruden out there. First of all, none of this issues that the Washington Redskins have are Jay Gruden's fault. I would just like to say that. And I think if they're thinking about firing Dwayne, I mean, uh, Jay Gruden right now, I think that's a mistake. Whether they want to fire him or not, that's fine. I'm not going to, yeah. like, argue that. I get it. At some point, like, it's just over and you got to go on with it. Again, I'll argue that Jay Gruden's not the issue. Not number the number one issue, the number two issue. He's not in the top five issues with the Washington Redskins. There's a lot of other issues on that team. And, again, he's not the GM, and he didn't put this team there. But I would say this to the Washington Redskins. I wouldn't fire Jay Gruden right now. I wouldn't. First of all, what's firing going to do? You're going to go, oh, we're better. We're going to the Super Bowl now. Right. You know, Bill Gallahan, Bill Callahan, or Greg Minoski, or head coach. No, you're not going. You're hitting anywhere. the reset button, and it doesn't really get reset until nine months from exactly now. Exactly right. Yeah. The best thing for Dwayne Haskins, I think, is to keep Jay Gruden there. That's Jay a Gruden's good point. the smartest quarterback guy they got there. Let him be there and develop the kid. Yeah. You know, and if you want to fire him, you fire him after the year, and that's go. But I think if you want to get Dwayne Haskins going, which it looks like they're going to do here soon, um, Jay Gruden's the right guy there to to kind of tutor him and bring him along. I will say this also. If they knew Case Keenum, okay, might be on a short leash this week and have the foot injury, I wish they would have just named Dwayne Haskins a starter on Wednesday. Instead of, like, he probably didn't get a ton of reps with the first right. team. And then you throw him into a tough situation in New York with a defense that does some different creative stuff, just not fair to him, let alone Terry McLaurin not being there, and their run game's nothing special. And, I mean, it was just it's just up spot to be in yeah. and I'm not trying to make excuses because he was nothing special yesterday either yeah he didn't look he didn't look great no he was no and Jones made some mistakes too Jones made some great throws rookie quarterback and again he can move uh and the best thing I like about the Giants and you want to see Daniel Jones and what he's doing I mean eight for 13 on third down I mean when you start mm. to see that that's quarterback down third down in the NFL is quarterback down and when you're moving the chains it's usually you're making great throws really good decisions or you're scrambling for a first down every now and then. And Daniel right. Jones is doing all three of those. Seahawks, Cardinals. Um, I'm going to go Card Arizona still waiting for that offense <laughs> that we've never seen. Right? I mean, that's basically, basically it. Larry Fitzgerald, five catches, 49 yards. He was targeted just 1.8 yards downfield on average, the far... Uh, far and away the lowest of any wide receiver in the league. So yeah. They weren't taking a huge amount of shots no. downfield. No. And the that's... offense doesn't design it for that either. Even yeah. the big shots he has hit through the first, you know, three games, they were just like one-on-one -on -one great throws. It wasn't like the offense designed to play like, oh, I was in the lab all week and here's a great way to throw a 50-yard post down the middle. No, none of that is there. Yeah. None of that. They just run offensive plays. It's an underwhelming offense. My headline would be Seattle was pissed off and they were going to make a point. Yep. Okay? And they realized that they got the Rams coming up and they got to keep pace in the NFC West. And they, you know, messed up a game against uh, the New Orleans Saints last week. And, you know, the original Kyler Murray, a.k.a. Russell Wilson, uh, he showed uh, everybody, like, hey, I'm still the man. Kyler, like, he's cool. He's the number one pick and all, Kyler but he would have never been the number one pick <laughs> yeah. unless I've done what I've done first. Quit trying to copy me. Uh, yeah, right? I'm the original. I'm the original <laughs> short guy I'm the that OG. can throw it. Yeah. They did look good. Jadevian uh, Clowney with definitely. the return touchdown. Right. Got the run game going. But the Cardinals are not a very talented team. And Cliff Kingsbury is still trying to find his way of his creativity, inventory, and Kyler Murray doesn't have a lot of help around him. Panthers, Texans, Whoa. Kyle Allen, 
Two and zero, oh, undefeated. Yes, they should never play Cam Newton ever, ever again. again. I don't. I, I'm surprised yeah. he's still on the roster. Well, I, you know, listen, I don't like that whole conversation oh. either. Okay? okay, I mean, Kyle Allen's done a really good job. There's no doubt about that. And I've heard the stat. Oh, the, you know, the last 11 games, Kyle Allen's got the only two wins for the Carolina Panthers. Okay, well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, Cam Newton played with a, a torn labrum last year at the end of the year. Right. Okay. Yeah. Liz Frank. I mean, yeah, and this year. You know, it's not cool that he misled the team about his injury, but it's also, I mean, everybody I always hear, I mean, oh, these guys get paid so much money, they don't care. Well, he cared that he lied about an injury because he wanted to play, yeah. right? He, I mean, football's important to him. So, like, like, we can't have it both ways with some of these superstars sometimes. Sometimes we're like, oh, I want them to care more, and then when they care too much, we go, he's too selfish. He should have told the team he was hurt and he couldn't do it. It's like a no-win situation, so I don't like that. But nonetheless, Kyle Allen is doing the proper things. Does have the fumbling issue. He's got to work on that. They need to put him some, some drills to give him some awareness in the pockets. But either way, when plays are there to be had, he's making the nice, accurate throws and doing those special things. And Carolina's D is real. Yeah. I mean, they're good. It's a really good defense in Carolina. And we're seeing that. And, you know, again, yeah, I mean, Cam Newton messed up the first two games. There's no denying that. Um, and I still don't know about the Houston Texans. I don't so, know what yeah, to think it's, about it's that. It's weird. I could have gone with I could have gone with Houston. We have a problem, but that's oh, that's, I like that. No, though. I mean, that's I like that's that. Too cliche. But I will. If Cam Newton gets back a hundred percent healthy, all right, they're still the most dangerous. With I mean, I know we all want to talk about you know the quarterbacks and at all oh, the quarterback, the quarterback, the quarterback. Yeah. Well, I mean, hey, they stayed patient with the run game. Christian McCaffrey had 10 receptions for 86 37 yards. 37 touches for right. Christian McCaffrey. So, that was six more than Leonard Fournette. Right. So they're so they're Absolutely. you know they're playing just a complete team football game and playing yeah. smart defense and that's really the point. Uh, I want to get into some uh, damn okays. Can we do that? Yeah. Before okay. We, before we wrap up, but we do have uh, our friends at Tide. Uh, of course we do. We have I mean, friends. We have, we have friends my... everywhere. That's why my clothes are clean, because it's <laughs> tied, fool. Okay, it's the beginning of the season, and Tide is making sure no one misses football on Sundays. Starring Peyton Manning, mm. the greatest acting quarterback in the history of football. Oh. Also in the conversation for being one of the greatest quarterbacks ever. <laughs> but he's surely a great actor, too. Yes. Okay, he really is. I laugh at all his mm -hmm. crap, all right? Starring Peyton Manning, this new campaign pits NBC's biggest stars and lineup of fan favorite shows against one another in the ultimate battle. The ultimate battle. Wow. Yes. Debating which night of the week is the best to do laundry. What's okay. your night? Okay. What's the best night for you to do laundry? Uh, I think Tuesday usually. I have yeah. an off day Tuesday and get it in there. And yeah, Tuesday have... or Wednesday seem like a laundry day. I mean, I'm not doing laundry. Because we work on the weekends. We're, we're working. We're right. wearing the stuff on right. the weekends. I'm not doing so. the laundry regardless, okay? But I if I was, it would be Tuesday or Wednesday, okay? Yeah. That would be the week I would do it. There's no football on, mm -hmm. and I can't be bothered with laundry, and I'm not doing the laundry anyways, okay? But all month long throughout NBC programming, check out why Manning and the league officially declare a new meeting for the NFL. That new meaning is not for laundry. Ba ba ba. Bam. But I know Peyton's going to be silly with that because yeah, he's silly. Totally. Yeah. All right. Damn. I'm okay. Damn. I'm okay. Yeah, no, I mean, yes. I'm okay. The legal gambolizing. Oh, baby. I am Chris Sims. I'm okay. Damn. I'm okay. We, oh, yeah. It just hit me. It just hit me. I've been trying to figure out what my that little mashup is, right? Yeah. Okay. Because I'm B-Rabbit. I'm not really B-Rabbit. Yeah, I like no. Eminem, but I'm not but that not big of a fan. No. Okay. But there's a song called Stan, and that's what it reminds me of. From Eminem. From Eminem. And that's remind. I've been telling Pete in the back room. There's a song. I was song like, our song that. that Eminem reminds me of, and I couldn't think of it, and it just hit me as I was hearing it. It's Stan, Pete. Okay. It could have been a and similar. Reminds, it could have been a similar beat to it. Yeah, right? it could have been. It was. Yeah. It was a similar. And we like made, you know, some people exactly. People confuse it. my rapping with Eminem sometimes. <laughs> so. <laughs> uh, so if you haven't ever seen Damn Okay before, uh, what Damn Okay is? They're players that you say you you like. Yes. Right. Like I knew they were good. Yes. But damn, okay. Yeah. You showed me something a little extra this past week. Yes. And so I think the first one I just mentioned him the last time yeah. for you was a guy who ran for over 200 yards. Uh, Leonard Fournette. Yes. Damn. Okay. There you go, Leonard Fournette. There you go, silencing the haters of the world. I mean, people blame Leonard Fournette. Like last Thursday night in the football game against the Titans where 
There's nowhere to run. They could have put seven, uh, you know, Jim Browns and Barry Sanders on the field, yeah. and they weren't going to run anywhere. But people go, what's wrong with Leonard Fournette? I'll tell you what's wrong with Leonard Fournette. Nobody's scared of the Jacksonville Jaguars passing game, okay? And people crowd the line in a scrimmage, and their own line's been a little banged up and not run blocking that well. And that's why it hasn't been great. But yesterday was like... Yeah, it was a little bit better than damn okay. Yeah. I mean, he was like a, a freight train running down the field. I mean, his size and physicality and explosion is phenomenal. And I know he had the 81-yard run, okay? Mm -hmm. But you take the 81-yard run away, and he still ran 28 times Huge. for what? 140 something yeah. yards right it was a phenomenal day I'm sick of the haters on Leonard Fournette a little bit okay I really am and I watch highlight shows last night Ahmed mm -hmm. and this is what really pisses me off I watch highlight shows I'm watching the Jags Broncos highlights not one highlight of the best player in the game what was it all Gardner of course yeah because we're obsessed with the quarterback now yeah nobody does anything but the quarterback it's uh -huh. driving me crazy Okay, it really is. I mean, again, Gardner Minshew did good things. Yes, I get it. Stop giving all the credit to the damn quarterback all the time. Yeah. Holy crap. <laughs> I mean, they were 4 for 14 yeah. on third down. I mean, I think now for the year, he's 9 for 38 on third downs. And we're about to, we're about to crown him like he's the greatest thing we've ever seen. He's doing a good job, just like Kyle Allen. He's taking there what's there to be had. They're running the ball. They're playing defense. But damn okay, Leonard Fournette. Yeah. Way to reestablish yourself, and I hope he can shut some of these people up. But Leonard doesn't have a mustache. That's the problem. No, right? I you got to have a mustache and wear short shorts, and right. does neither. That's he does all, neither. Yeah, he does neither. He uh, might wear short shorts. I don't know. No, that but, is true. Because he does have some thighs to show off. I would. Uh, Von Miller with four quarterback hits on Gardner Minshew in that game, most in the league. Yeah. So he's still really good. Yeah, no doubt. You got uh, one? I do have one. I want to hear I got it. a damn okay. Chargers defensive back Desmond King. Okay. What do you think of that? Yeah, I like Two it. Two and a half sacks in the game. Mm -hmm. uh, most of any player this week. Also forced a fumble. He's a fifth-round guy out of Iowa in 2017. Also on kickoff returns. So Desmond King, yeah. I'll be honest with you, I kind of broke the rules because it's supposed to be someone that I knew was good beforehand. I didn't really know much about him. But until, he's good. Until this. But, but he's, he's like he showed up. Yeah. I mean, it was against the Dolphins. So but that's what, like, not that that's great. That's all right. Bro. He's a hell of a nickel, nickel back over that defense. Like, okay. that's what he does. He's good in coverage. He's good at running the ball. I mean, if he gets his hand on the ball, he's very capable of intercepting passes. But so there we go. I'm with Damn. you all the way okay. there. I mean, to piggyback off that game. Right? Dolphins had a lead. Do Damn. Damn. Okay. okay. Wow. They're winning a game 7-3. Okay. to three. I I, We almost had to stop the game and have a ceremony to go, they're winning by four, everyone. Yeah. Go home. It's over now. It was scary, and they end up <laughs> losing by 20. But, yeah, that was. they showed me a little something there. The fact they can get a lead in an NFL game, yep. damn, okay. And they were tied at 10-10 ones, too. Ooh. It was crazy. Like, Riveting stuff in do have, Miami. Do you have another one? Um, another one? I, yeah, I, I already talked about this guy a little bit, but yeah. I'll bring him up again just because he was my old coach. John Gruden. Mm -hmm. Damn, okay. I mean, team played hard yesterday after a horrible loss, you know, to the Minnesota Vikings. They've kind of got their butt beat the last two weeks. Uh, lost at home to the Kansas City Chiefs. Got their butt beat on the road in Minnesota. On the road again in Indianapolis. And I'm thinking, man, they're going to get run over by this Colts o line and things. Nope. John Gruden came up with the right game plan, got his offense on the right foot, deserves a lot of credit. Really, it was him that jump-started the victory through his play calling and play design and creativeness there. That's what got it done. So I got to give my man, Johnny G, a lot of credit. John Gruden, He was damn. going boom, 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 okay. boom. Yeah, That's why he's scoring touchdowns. That's what he does. Boom. Oh, yeah, or knock on no, wood. Knock on wood. Knock on wood. Knock on wood. That's why we always did that. Boom, boom. Did knock you really? Oh. So that's been a thing uh, yeah, oh. back in the day. Knock on wood if you're with me, guys. Did the team buy in, or did oh, they make definitely. fun of it? Oh, definitely. Definitely. No, it. we okay. did. We bought it. Okay. I mean, John, was, he's a good talker in front of the team. It's getting to the point where it's getting a little cliche now, right? So I think he's going to get made fun of maybe in the future Well, for maybe it, he but... needs to come up with a new one. Yes. Yes. It's about yeah. time. Okay. Uh, we're okay. Good. We're good. We're done. We yeah. did it. We're going to look at pictures next. Oh, <laughs> Chris and Ahmed, look at pictures. As if you haven't talked enough already. It's okay. It just is so great to talk to you. I'll take as many hours as I can. Oh, and Donald McDonald, just to give you guys an update, he took off his four-layered yeah, flannel jacket. Uh, it's it's 76 now, and he's figured, ah, oh, it's a little warm for the flannel jacket. Mm -hmm. So now it's around his shoulder. Kept it on for most of the podcast. Got his Giants hat on. But that's it. We're done. I have had enough for today, okay?
Chris Sims on button. Hope everybody enjoyed. We'll be doing deep dives on Wednesday. I don't know. I'm going to try to deep dive four games, and we'll hit on a number of other things going on around the NFL. You the man, Ahmed. Are you coming in on Wednesday? Are you I will Wednesday? not be here. No, no, what an asshole. He won't Sorry. be here Wednesday, but I'll be here. Uh, that's what I do. And watch me uh, me and Ahmed when yeah. we look at pictures yeah, and we make silly comments. It's, it's really funny. I, I like what uh, Ahmed does. He picks some good ones. All right, everybody. Peace. Have a good one. Uh, talk to you Wednesday.